back in 2059, I was in the fifth grade. The world was pretty different then, not like now. Now everyone is used to having everyone else living next door, working alongside, marrying into families that don't look anything like your own kind. Back then, the government had only started integration, and we had a bluey in my fifth grade class. His father was on the economics team from Aldebaran, and I guess he thought it would be good for his kid to grow up among humans. At least, that's what my own father had said. So blam, he moves into the old Adams house on Sheridan, rubbing elbows with the CEOs of Walmart and Abbott and his kids in my class. A bluey. I don't remember exactly when he got there, but it was sometime in the middle of the term. I remember he was there the day our English teacher, Miss Malkasian, started in on figurative language, metaphor. She wanted us all to understand metaphor. How sometimes you can talk about one kind of thing, but like it was a second kind of thing. I remember Miss Malkasian thought it was pretty important. I remember she said something that I thought was pretty stupid and strange. She said, metaphor is the sliced bread of language. It didn't make any sense to me when she said it, and I guess because I've always been outspoken, I must have told her so. She smiled nodded at me like she was really happy and said, it was a metaphor, Jacob. Let's talk about what it means. The rest of that week, we struggled with metaphors. <laughs> Not just me, all of the class. We were 10 and 11 years old. What did we know about figurative language? And Miss Malkasian talked about the tenor of a metaphor and the vehicle of a metaphor. And I remember having images of singers in sports cars, but that wasn't it at all. She liked it when I told her, though. She said, very good, Jacob. You've made a clever pun, but also, in some ways, a metaphor about metaphor. A meta-metaphor. The entire class groaned at that, and I knew I was in deep trouble. Billy McKenzie would probably beat the crap out of me on the playground after school. Bad enough we're doing metaphor, dweeb. Don't need to be doing no meta-meta-metaphors. It was kind of funny because Billy McKenzie had a really bad stutter and half the time he said metaphor, he said meta metaphor anyway. But in fifth grade, irony is even less appreciated than figurative language. By the second week, Miss Malkasian was giving out assignments. Now that we knew and understood all about metaphors, she wanted us to make up some of our own. She thought it would be extra special if we all worked on the same theme. Our assignment was to create a metaphor for happiness, and then to write a page explaining what our metaphor meant and why. I was in hell, but I took some pleasure knowing that no matter how rough the assignment was for me, Billy McKenzie was even more screwed. At least, that's what I thought. The next day, we all turned in our papers. Billy's metaphor was simple and direct. Happiness is the fight after school. More than just the class enforcer, Billy had a poet's soul behind his stutter. He waxed lyrical about bruising his fist while bruising some other kid's face. The sound of jeans scraping along asphalt when his victim went down, the warm satisfaction of maintaining order in his universe. Miss Malkasian practically cried when she read it to the class. Most of us were disgusted and a little sickened by it, but she thought it was perfect. Billy McKenzie glared at us as he blushed, daring us to give him an excuse to experience new heights of happiness after school. I've long forgotten what metaphor I came up with. I just remember it was lame and pathetic, and I really didn't have a clue what Miss Malkasian wanted, what metaphors were, or how to figure figurative language. But I remember the Bluey's paper. I remember that Miss Malkasian couldn't understand it. Happiness is a stable transuranium element. That's what he'd written. The rest of the paper, the supposed explanation was all about higher mathematics, I guess, and Ms. Malkasian was only competent through the stuff that you get in the primary grades. Maybe it made sense, maybe not. She couldn't tell, and she finessed the question of a grade by declaring that mathematics wasn't the proper vehicle, let alone the tenor, for an English class. 
the bluey had to do the assignment over.